What is going on guys? My name is Paul Heslop and welcome to the Creative Juice Show. It has been a while. It has been a minute since I've done this show and I'm just happy to be back. And you know, there's many, many, many reasons why I haven't published an episode in, and now it's been oh, four or five months now. And it's basically been all the summer of 2020. I mean, we all know this is the summer of 2020 is a time to remember or maybe forget, right? And there's really no excuse besides the fact that you guys, it's hard to do a podcast amongst many other pieces of content that I'm putting out there and publishing and helping other companies publish. And it's just hard to get it all done. But no, well, let me just blame it on the... COVID-19, how about we blame it on the on the pandemic, why I haven't published in a while. So uh, some new formats to the show that are going to be changing. If you're watching this on video, this is the first run of this podcast that I'm actually shooting on video. Uh, or if you're listening on the podcast, I appreciate you coming back and subscribing. But uh, yes, a little bit of format change. Uh, I'm going to try and drag Laura in here from time to time when I can, but she is a busy mother of three and has got a lot going on so she can't join me as often as that I would love her to join me on the show because she brings a lot to it but uh it's just honestly um I'm just gonna get real you guys like it's it's hard to be consistent in content um even though I have produced many 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 episodes of video in between the last published episode of the podcast it is just hard to get it all done And uh, I know many of you who are wanting to publish more of your own content. Um, It just takes a tremendous amount of work, whether you're scheduling a guest and trying to line up schedules and and book them appropriately at the same time when you both have quiet time, when you can both record, and then you have to do a pre-lining a call. So although I would love, absolutely love to have guests on the show, and I'm going to plan on having guests on the show, I am just, I'm sort of... Tired of waiting for that perfect moment when everything, all the stars align that um, I can put together a traditional podcast interview style out there. So what I'm going to be covering is similar topics in business, sales, marketing, advertising, creativity. The goal of the show is still to get your creative juices flowing and, but I want to just do it more frequently, hopefully. I want to put out more content and I am always absorbing and and reading content myself and coming across really interesting articles and subjects that are really fine tuning and helping me with marketing and helping me run better, a better business. And I wanted to share with you guys always my findings and what I find interesting for myself. So some is going to be more applicable to you listening to this or watching this than others at times, but I just want to continue to put content out there because uh, you know, I, I've heard this an analogy similar to this um, or something like this in the past, but it relates to art. But when you, if you were to spend a year and work on one masterpiece for one year, someone who spends a year and produces a hundred pieces of, of okay art is going to be far ahead. And so that's kind of what I'm trying to do. I, I'm trying to put out more content to really fine tune is again, as I come across subjects that I find helpful for myself or principles that I find helpful and something I'm currently running. I just want to share those with you guys. And so today's subject happens to be similar on this pandemic that we are all going through right now This from this COVID-19 is the fact that Lululemon is expanding their retail stores, not closing them down. They've had growth during this pandemic, which is absolutely amazing. I find a retailer that is charging $98 for a pair of yoga pants and $58 for a tank top is actually expanding during this time. It's amazing. And some things that I have learned about them and sort of thought about, I want to give you some takeaways. I have three main takeaways that I'm going to share with you of what I feel like Lululemon is doing to really help with this. So we'll get into it. Uh, I'm trying to do all these episodes in, a, in just one take. I'm just trying to be that one take wonder. So if I have some some skips and some mistakes and read some notes from time to time, uh, please, uh, please bear with me. So, um, you know, I first wanted to also mention you guys with this podcast, I got, I got a sponsor uh, and I'm excited to announce 
the sponsor of this podcast today is Process Agency. They are located in Salt Lake City, Utah, Los Angeles, and also have offices in China. They're a design and manufacturing agency that produces the world's best packaging, consumer packaging. I've seen this stuff up close and personal, and it is absolutely fantastic. They've been around for 15 years. They work with some of the biggest brands in the world, Stance, New Balance, Disney, Adidas, Victoria's Secret, and they have just produced, they have a really unique business model where they help brands really define, strategize, and produce, not only design, but produce uh, high-end consumer packaging. So I've actually helped them build a YouTube series, uh, kind of joining forces with them on that. So you can check that YouTube series out over at Process Minted. If you're on YouTube, you just search the word Process Minted, you could find out some really awesome things about packaging. But back to the Creative Juice Show, um, I, you know, I, I want to share with you guys what Lululemon has done during this pandemic to actually grow their business, brick and mortar. And when the pandemic first hit, we all know that there was like a period of a few weeks where no one really did anything. Everybody was kind of sitting on their hands. They're like, ah, uh, not spending any money whatsoever. But shortly thereafter, uh, in that April timeline, there was a lot of online businesses that like went crazy, that like actually expanded significantly in their businesses. And Lululemon was definitely one of those. You know, I, um, I think that I came across an article on Bloomberg.com that the, the CEO, his name is Calvin McDonald, he was recently interviewed in a video and he talked about some of the things that they're doing, which is, I find interesting. Uh, first of all, they're not going in and slashing pricing or anything like that. They're just like, yeah, no, here's our pricing. Um, but they're doing some, some really interesting things with an experiential retail. Um, they have, their shares have climbed 31% in 2020, which is crazy. And uh, actually recently, about a month ago, so this would have been August of 2020, my wife and I, Laura, we were down in Las Vegas and we were doing some shopping and there is a Lulu outlet mall in one of the, the Vegas um, outlets. And so, you know, you can get great prices and everything like that. We were big fans of the brand. And so we went and because of the pandemic, they will only allow like 10 people in the store at a time. Um, Lulu's models is they typically keep smaller footprint stores, which has been successful for them in the brick and mortar retail. But we went in and we had to give our name because they only allow a certain amount of people and like a couple of those are employees. So it was like 10 people plus their employees. And um, we, they said, okay, we'll text you when we're ready. And we went to lunch and went shopping and stuff like that. So it was like almost two hours later that we are actually able to go into the store, <laughs> which is crazy. And um, so we went in and at, at ever, any store that we had have been into since the pandemic began, Lululemon was the only store that we're able to actually try on clothes. And I don't know if other stores are just not allowing it or I'm not sure why other stores are not quite allowing that. I know some have started to really open up and allow that more. But when we were on that particular trip and shopping in August of 2020, they were the only ones who let us do that. But this is not really the reason why their growth, you know, they're, they're doing some experiential retail, which is, which is interesting. And I'll get to these three points that I mentioned before of what I, three takeaways, why I feel as though we can, what we can learn from Lululemon during this and maybe apply to our business and our marketing. Um, but they recently, I think it maybe it was last year, they purchased this mirror app, which is a, um, fitness exercise streaming service app. Um, they've in, uh, implemented fitness within their store locations as well. I know in one of the locations that I've been into, there was various fitness classes. They would bring in these local fitness influencers who own gyms or who had these fitness classes and they, all the racks were on rollers and they would wheel everything to the sides and actually do classes within their retail locations, right? Which is pretty cool. Um, they've, they've also experimented, experimented starting in Chicago with some, some gyms and slash cafes within their locations. Um, they're also getting it more into plus size modeling. They've also, they, in the past, they've been known as like kind of shaming that uh, with the image and the, the branding they've put out there, but now they're actually getting to some plus size modeling and plus size uh, clothing, which is great. And then it, expanding further in, in the next, you know, 18 to 24 months, they're gonna be adding a shoe wear line to, or a footwear line, you could call it shoe wear or footwear. Footwear is probably the right thing to say there. Uh, they're going to be adding a footwear line to their business, so it's pretty it's pretty cool what they've what they've done. 
But I'm just amazed. How, how does a company, and make this? I think this is applicable to your business and to my businesses, how do you take and you're selling a $98 pair of leggings and how are you increasing it in brick and mortar? Um, there's a lot of things that we don't understand about the behind the scenes of their business, how, how really cash rich are they? There's probably some public knowledge on that. But when you are healthy as a business and during this time you make some decisions, to, first of all, to pay all your rent and to not put off and defer your landlords, this is extremely important. Um, you know, their CEO mentioned this is one of the things that they did where companies like Gap and other retailers are actually deferring payments, uh, suspending some payments. They're losing out, closing stores. They're losing on their prime retail that they have anchored for many years. Now, if you're, a, if you're in brick and mortar right now, there's an opportunity where landlords are sort of desperate to sign leases, but no one's signing leases. People are actually walking away from leases now and getting out of them. Now, Lululemon is maybe doubling down and saying, okay, that spot that Gap was in or another retailer was in, we want that, but guess what? Since we're buddies and we've been paying you guys on time all the time, how about let's, um, let's get some like preferential treatment? So I think they're actually going in and signing long-term leases and getting extremely preferential treatment on the lease, on the terms, which really can make a massive difference. If you're getting into a 10-year lease and you get it on more of your terms, this makes or breaks retail at times. Whereas you're gonna see inflation happen and, and, and prices of everything increase, they're going in and securing these long-term leases for a much better deal, which I think is one of the things really that they're doing. Uh, I would imagine if there are some locations that were struggling and not that they weren't ever to, able to pay rent, but someone like, I don't mean to pick on Gap by any means, but they were just an example I thought of. Um, over communication is key. I think this is really the first point and what you can do to learn from Lululemon within your brand is over communication. You know, I had, I had a buddy of mine who, I'm not gonna mention the name of the, of the locations, but they have essentially 50 brick and mortar uh, retail locations over three states, uh, one of which is Utah. And he, during the pandemic, they, <laughs> Even literally at the day it started kind of happening and the NBA counseled and all that kind of stuff, they had all their ducks in a row. They turned in their paperwork before the government even said that they were doing PPE loans and disaster recovery loans. They actually, because you can go and apply for a disaster recovery loan like right now, even not inside a pandemic. And they had this stuff not only submitted electronically, but they had um, walked to the office, they had mailed it in. Uh, physical copies of all this like before they even open it up. So they were kind of on top of the ball, but what they do is they have 50 different landlords that are like going to be like knocking the door and be like, come on, let's, let's get some, let's get some rent money. Right. And the fact that they over communicated with them, that they told them what their status was, what their plan was when you are in a bind, when you're in a tough spot, when you owe someone a lot of money. And I can take this from personal experience when I had companies where I had vendors and we would give a terms to uh, customers and they were late on their payment or they weren't paying us. The ones I worried about were the ones that weren't picking up the call, that weren't calling me and communicating with me. Those are the people that I worried about. So, you know, when, when employees or, or staff members or team are not certain, whether it be financially or they're just not certain about their jobs, when you over communicate and you're upfront with people, they're much more likely to be loyal and give you preferential terms and work with you. So when you over communicate with a landlord or with somebody that you're kind of putting in a bind financially, this is the best possible thing. You would think that people go the opposite way and most people do, they mostly go opposite. But when you say, look, this is my schedule of terms, this is what I wanna do. Um, I was way more likely to work with customers of mine who owed me a lot of money in the past who just updated me and communicated with me. So I think through times like this, the thing that the Lululemon has done really with their landlords and everything is they've over communicated. Um, that is really the first point. The second point being, uh, and, and my big takeaway from learning from how they've really expanded is build an awesome product. <clears throat> this is cliche and this is very, it's easier said than done, you guys. We, we know that we must build good products. But when you can build something that you know, for me as a, I'd consider myself an aspiring minimalist. 
I'm not, I'm not there yet. Because <laughs> uh, uh, I like to, I also feel nostalgia towards certain things and like to hold on to some things. But as an aspiring minimalist myself, <clears throat> I like to buy less products, less clothing, but I like to buy more quality clothing, uh, more timeless piece, like especially with like a pair of pants or a jacket or something like that. Like t-shirts are one thing. But when you buy, I'd rather have less but higher quality. And I think um, during the pandemic with Lululemon, a lot of the jobs, a lot of like, you call it blue collar, but like waitressing, inter entertainment and service-based businesses, obviously these went way down. And so a lot of like the higher income individuals kept their jobs, kept their executive positions. Yes, a lot of people did lose their jobs, but uh, because they're in a higher tier of spend, their business stayed afloat, whereas like maybe a gap, right, is hemorrhaging money and losing business. That was one of the biggest takeaways for me was just when you build a high quality product, even if it's a 98 pair dollar of yoga pants, people will pay for quality. People will pay for the best. And yes, there's probably companies out there, there's probably brands out there that make a better legging, that make a better tank top than Lululemon, but perception is reality. They have now that logo that every girl wants to wear at the gym as a statement piece, as a, a, an identifier with others. So they've really, they've built brand, don't get me wrong, like they're amazing at branding and really built a, a fantastic brand. But they've also built a quality product that when you do invest in that from personal experience, invest in a pair of pants at that level, uh, it, it, it really is because you want, you, it, you, you believe in the product, you've tried it, and you go back over and over and over again, like a lot of their customers have done. So that was my second key takeaway was really just build quality product. And let's get to that third point of, you know, and, and I think that Lululemon has done a fantastic job with this, uh, not just through the pandemic, but really this has helped them, I think, ride through the pandemic and beyond and help them grow within this is build raving fans. Again, much easier said than done. As we know, this is a common sense principle in business. We know that we should have raving fans. We know this is an important principle in business. But how many of us actually put a lot of effort into this? Um, sometimes if we don't have these raving fans, we have to manufacture them. We have to figure out how we can uh, manufacture uh, maybe an ambassador program. Lululemon does have an ambassador program, and I can't really speak... I don't know all the inner, uh, you know, all the inner workings of this, but I have a couple friends who are Lululemon ambassadors, and I know they get, you know, heavy discounts up to forty off of everything in the store, and they can also have their really close friends and family when they're shop with them, they can get that same discount, and so, you know, they they partner with local influencers that are in health and fitness and food, and they they innate, they give them this platform to be an ambassador for their brand. Now, um, because they give them, you know, people are motivated by money, right? I mean, if you're paid to do something, you will quickly become an ambassador of anything. But when you have a $100 pair of pants or a $70 shirt, and you give somebody a discount and say, we believe in you, we want you to represent us, that does a lot for these influencers. So it's a really win-win. Influencers can hold events there as well, uh, depending on their size. Um, they can partner with Lululemon for discounts and um, swipe ups and everything like that. So they've really done a great job about manufacturing brand ambassadors. Now they have hundreds of thousands of other, if not millions of other brand ambassadors that are just naturally love the brand. You know, when you see an influencer, somebody that you look up to you, that you that you follow, that is in the fitness space, wear, promote, talk about their brand in a positive light, you know, chances are you might want to to do the same. And so they've done a fantastic job about over time building an amazing product, building raving fans. And again, if you if you don't have that like uh, those those that core base of raving fans about your business, and sometimes you just have to create it. You have to build a, a program where you give them something of value in exchange for them becoming an ambassador, really representing your brand in a fantastic way. So um, over communication, build a great product, build that raving fans. It's amazing to see Lulu's growth during this, even in brick and mortar retail. Uh, and um, you guys, thank you for joining me on the podcast today. Uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you guys on future episodes. So if you're into on Apple or Spotify, 
Spotify, please give that a subscribe. YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn, thanks you guys for sharing this and for the comments, and we will see you guys on the next one.